In this video, I'm gonna show you a variety of different use cases for URL parameters, which is really gonna help you level up your dynamic data. All of what I'm going to show you here is really easy to set up and achieve, and we're gonna use a free plugin to make it happen. So if that sounds interesting, definitely click that subscribe button for more videos like this, and we're gonna go ahead and jump into the tutorial now. So on my screen here, I have a couple of examples of things that are fairly common, and you may even have worked with these sorts of URL parameters before. So it's really common when running Google Ads or Facebook or any kind of paid marketing campaign for you to want to track where that information is coming from. Now you can do this from any source, whether it be your own site, somebody else's site, newsletters, Facebook, Google business profiles, anywhere you can add these URL parameters to. And that gives you a lot of flexibility, both from an analytics perspective, you can see where that traffic is coming from or what they're doing. And then also you can show and hide content on your page, which is what I wanna show you in this tutorial. So here on our page, we have a couple of different sections I've set up. And what I wanna do is make sure that this gray box only shows up to people that are arriving to the page from Google Ads. The second one is going to only show up to people who clicked a link that let's say for a sale that's expired. And then the last one here is for the public site. The catch being that if they have one of these other two banners, we don't wanna show them this public site one. So this is really easy to achieve. What I wanna do is in the back end, make sure you have the plugin called Block Visibility installed. This plugin is absolutely amazing. I have a different video on my channel where I talk about how to create a kind of custom dynamic membership site using this plugin and ACF. But today we're gonna to talk about the URL parameters and query strings portion of this. So when you do that, you have the plugin installed. Let's go ahead and edit our homepage here. I'm gonna go ahead and expand my sidebar so we can see what we're working with. And these query strings are really easy to put together. The beauty of this is that we can put anything we want in it. Now, if you don't wanna come up with these yourself, there are tools that will help you build them. And they typically follow a convention for like UTM parameters, you'll see them referred to as. So Fathom Analytics has one or Google has one. There's a million of these tools out there. So you would type in, you know, yoursite.com. Name of the campaign might be something like, you know, whatever, it could be newsletter. And then the campaign source could be like button link, something like that. And what you'll see is these tools spit out uh, yoursite.com with a question mark. Now, anything after that question mark is the URL query or the query string. And you can see that those pieces of data are tied together, UTM underscore campaign equals newsletter. If you wanna go this route and use something conventional like this, you absolutely can, but we can also build our own. We can make up our own query strings. So what we could do is on this Google Ads, let's scroll down here. And when you see the visibility option, click these three little dots and make sure you have query string turned on. You'll see that that's gonna open up this box here. And this is really where we can start customizing this. So let's say for this first one, of course, we only want this to show up as um, you know people arriving from Google Ads. So what we need to do in this required query section is say source equals Google hyphen ads like that. We'll go ahead and update this. And now when we look at it on the, the homepage, because we have no URL parameter present, that box is not gonna show up at all. Then what we could do is say question mark source equals Google hyphen ads. And look at that, our gray box has reappeared. So now what I could do is I could take this URL with my query string on it and go put that wherever I want. That could be in my newsletter. In this case, of course, it would need to be from your Google ads for it to make sense, but you get the idea. The exact same approach applies to the second box. So in this case, our required query is going to be sale equals ended. And then when I update this, we're gonna notice that this yellow box goes away because our current query string is source equals Google ads. So that's exactly as we intended. If we change this to sale equals ended, we're gonna get the yellow box, but not our gray Google ads box, because of course it's not applicable to us. The other thing that we could do is use the not operator here. And that way we could hide the public site, this little blue box down here, if either of the other two exist. So on the right side, you can see required queries not, we could say source equals Google hyphen ads, and then sale equals ended. And then this says hide the block if at least one of the provided URL query strings is present. So now when we update this, we're gonna refresh and we only see the sale ended box exactly as we intended. If we remove this and went back to what was essentially our public facing homepage, we're only gonna see the blue box, which is exactly what we wanted. So now I wanna show you something that I do really often, which is using these query strings with form plugins. So my form plugin of choice is Gravity Forms. And with that, in my Gravity Form, what I could do 
is edit this. I'm gonna to go to my confirmations. And instead of just a default text confirmation, I'm gonna redirect. For the redirect URL, I'm just gonna stick in our site here. I'm going to drop this off because we actually wanna build our query strings here. So this is really cool because you can add specific data from your field into this. So you could say, you know, something simple. You could make up your own and do like submission equals success and first underscore name equals and then pull in some dynamic data from the form like that. So this allows you to do a lot of really custom stuff. Pulling in information from the query string probably will require a little bit of PHP, but ChatGPT can absolutely help you with something like that. So we'll save our confirmation and then let's go ahead and just take our form. Let's make up a little contact page real quick. Then we're just gonna pop in a gravity form. It's our contact, publish this. So we have our information input here in the form and let's just say test submission. So now when we submit, it's gonna redirect us and it's going to add those query strings to the page. So look at that, it took us to our homepage and it added the query strings of submission equals success and my first name from that actual form submission. So with this, now we can do whatever we want. If we were to edit our homepage, then let's just say we wanted to duplicate this container and we can say, your submission was successful. And then we would maybe change our background color to, I don't know, some kind of green to indicate mission success. So now we would just want to change this to, we're gonna go ahead and leave this. And then we're gonna say required queries for this one must be submission equals success like that. So now we'll update. Then if we refresh here with this one, boom, there's our submission was successful. So now we can show any piece of content that we want that's applicable to these people after they submit the form. For instance, I've used forms like this when there's a limited time event and you can say your submission was successful, but we're not ready yet. Check your email in you know, a few weeks, whenever this is open and there'll be more information for you. So this is extremely powerful. Using redirects off of forms and the dynamic data that comes with that is really, really powerful. And we're doing this with one simple query string in our browser. So. It's very, very powerful. Another really awesome use case for query strings is being able to pre-fill form data. So kind of going back to the example of gravity forms, if I were to edit my contact form, then if we go in here, we just click a field, we can scroll down a little bit to the advanced section and we can choose this allow field to be populated dynamically. Now this parameter name is referring to our query string. So if you recall, we had the first underscore name equals and all I need to do is simply take that and pop it into our first field. So first underscore name and save this. And then now if I go look at my contact form and then I just need to add my first underscore name equals Jonathan and look at that. Now it pre-fills my name based on this query string. So I do this for client onboarding forms using like a Zapier automation to build this link for me. So when they click my onboarding form to go to my gravity form, all their common stuff that they've already pre-filled is entered there. First name, last name, email, address, business email, stuff like that that they've already given me just in their signup process. That way they're not having to duplicate information. Plus it looks cool. Clients are often like, wow, that's amazing. So being able to pre-fill this form data is super awesome. So there's multiple use cases for this kind of information. URL parameters can be used for pre-filling form data, showing and hiding sections dynamically, and there's many, many more use cases. So with that, when you're working with URL parameters, don't just think of them as a simple A-B test for marketing. They're extremely powerful and can hold pretty much any information you want. Just make sure that it shouldn't be sensitive data because anybody could see these URL parameters. However, passing data between forms and other third-party apps back and forth to your website can be extremely powerful, both like we've already said from a marketing perspective, but also from a convenience and just technical capability and dynamic data perspective. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Quick crash course and URL parameters. If you have any questions, please do let me know. And otherwise I'll look forward to seeing you in a future video.